can God be without form and with and without attributes? The one of the teachings from the Vedas, scripture of authority says, Ekama Satta Vipra Bahuta Vadanti. Same ultimate can be thought of and approached using different ways. It is central teaching of our tradition. Ancient scriptures like the Upanishads were talking about Atman and Brahman, which are without attributes, without form. This is how we started. Hinduism was actually highly materialistic until very recently. The ancient philosophies, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, were materialistic. The first time we made a transition into entering the realm of the spirit was with a very ancient sage called Sage Kapil. Kapil said, before I make sense of the world, what is the nature of reality? Let me first make sense of who am I? So he started searching inside. What is my true nature? Am I just the body? He realized, not the body. He went with further. He said, am I the mind? And Kapil said, nope, not the mind. Maybe I'm the intellect. He said, no, I'm not the intellect either. So he went inward. He said, oh, am I the ego that's holding all these faculties together? He said, no, I am the spirit. This is where real Hinduism started with this ancient sage Kapil. Talking of deeper dimension to reality, which is neither physical, nor mental, nor intellectual, but our true nature. How far back does Kapil go? There is no historic evidence. I would say it goes back about 3,000 years. This is where real Hinduism first shown itself. Why should I not consider Kapil a founder? I, I consider him the, perhaps the, the major founder because the idea of Kapil became Sankhya Darshan, then it became Yoga Darshan, then it became Vedanta Darshan, looking inwards to resolve the human condition. But then, this is a beautiful part of our tradition, we produce giants who say these ideas are too subtle for the average person to swallow. Adi Shankara focused on the idea of ultimate reality without form, without name called Advaita Vedanta. He focused on that and revived Hinduism. 200 years after Adi Shankara, who promoted this idea of God without form, without name, without attributes, came another great person, Ramanuja Acharya. He decided it's important for humanity to personify this idea of spirit so that then they can build their relationship with it. Otherwise, it's too subtle. They can't link with it. They can't engage with this idea of Atman and Brahman. He promoted the idea of Vishnu as the ultimate reality. This is the beginning of Hinduism with names and form. With Vishnu you can engage. How can you engage with Atman and Brahman? Both are true. But then we need some metaphor to reconcile these absolutely contradictory ideas. That metaphor came with Brahma Krishna Paramahans. He says it's like ice and water. Water doesn't have any form. Ice seems to have form in all different kinds of shapes. He says the love of the individual will freeze this formless principle into the form of his desire. Brahman takes on a form to appease his devotees. Our God is infinite, but has the power to become finite. So how would Hindus decide what form to choose, Vishnu or Shiva? Somebody like me, for example, I believe there's an energy, but I don't want to believe that that's God. Our tradition is the only tradition that has recognized the ultimate reality can be thought of as female. So we recognize the role of women because they produce life. They are gods and goddesses. How do you decide which one is the right one? The ultimate reality, ultimate God. You will love Shiva and Vishnu and mother goddesses. In reality, the one that you like is ultimate. You decide which particular format of God you prefer. It normally is decided by the background that you come from, your family tradition. It's not necessary. Which is the best form? Focus on the one that suits your own temperament, your background, pluralism. Such a powerful thought at the heart of our tradition. Not many gods, many ways to think about ultimate reality. This even resolves the issue between intra-faith dialogue. That brings me to another question. Why do I have to give it the name God? Majority of thinking youngsters in the world will move away from the idea of a super personality because it comes with a lot of unanswered questions. The biggest one is called suffering. A very powerful, blunt question comes from the philosopher like David Hume. If God is behind this creation, is all powerful, all knowing, all compassion, why should a single living thing suffer for a single instant? Very challenging question. And there is no answer to this. The reason why people like Richard Dawkins become atheists is precisely this. How do you relate? There are two movements which are very interesting. They came from India as well. One is called Arya Samaj, the other is called Brahmo Samaj. Both of them believe in the ultimate reality, but don't give them a form. It is acceptable. This is part of Hindu tradition as well. 